are listening to Let the Money Talk podcast, a podcast where our Philip Capital's experts deconstruct world-class tactics, tools, and routines for managing your finances. I'm Rashawn, your host for Money Never Sleeps. Stay tuned for our experts' top tips. Hello, and welcome back to Let the Money Talk. I'm Rashawn Gidwani, the presenter for Pitch Media. Today, we'll be discussing some of the steps parents can take to plan for their financial well-being and legacy. Joining us is a very special guest, Miss Irene Yi, a certified financial planner at Philip Capital, who's going to tell us more. Hi, Irene. How are you today? Hi, Rashawn. Thanks for having me on the program. I'm Farine. I will be sharing my personal opinion in our discussion today. It is not to be construed as professional financial consultation advice. All right, noted. So let's begin. First things first, if there's a sudden life disruption, what can one do to protect their financial resources? Irene? Well, since medical expenses in Singapore have shown an average inflation of about 10% each year, it is important that we manage our healthcare costs. One option is to supplement your MediShield life with an integrated hospitalization and surgery shield plan, also known as the H&S shield plan. Such health insurance premiums can often be partially paid with CPF MediSafe for Singapore citizens and PRs. Depending on your age, up to $300 to $1,200 each year can be paid with CPF MediSafe for such shield plans. You can also supplement your Elder Shield or Care Shield life with a private long term care cover. This will help you mitigate expenses involved with nursing homes or home nursing services in the event of a loss of independence. This means the inability to perform daily activities such as washing, dressing, feeding, toileting, or walking. As with the HNS Shield plans, you may also use CPF MediSafe to partially pay for your private long-term care cover. In addition to the CPF monies that may be used towards HNS Shield premium payment, another $600 each year from your MediSafe, CPF MediSafe may also be used for such Elder Shield supplement plans. Do also make sure to cover for yourself and for your family with adequate personal accident insurance. There are now options that include lifetime cover and cover for infectious diseases. I see. Okay, thanks, Irene. Very informative. I didn't know that medical expenses in Singapore have shown an average inflation of about 10%. So you're right. One must manage their healthcare costs. Now, say a person loses his or her income. What are some ways to manage such a situation, Irene? Well, income loss can be due to disruptions in employment or business caused by chronic illnesses. When you have sufficient critical illness cover, you will have the needed financial resources to tide you through such income disruptions. Mm. The lesser known income replacement plans can also serve to counter a potential job or business disruption by providing supplemental cash flows in the event of inability to work due to illness or accidents. I see. So retirement is a key issue as far as financial well-being goes. What personal finance pointers would you give to those who'd like to retire with enough money to tide them over? Well, planning early to have adequate and secure retirement income is key. For most, CPF Life provides a basic monthly income from ages 65 to 85 typically forming the foundational cash flow in retirement cash flow planning. Most individuals who choose to have CPF Life can expect a monthly payout of, say, $770 to $1,420. Now, if you compare these figures against your expected minimum monthly expenses in your retirement years, you will come to realize that you need to supplement this cash flow with other income streams. Options such as rental income or stock dividends may be popular, but such income streams can be uncertain. 
If you are relatively conservative with your monies, you may wish to look into guaranteed cash flow plans. Talk to an experienced certified financial planner who will be able to help you make realistic projections and calculations involved in your monthly retirement cash flow planning. By doing this, you will be better prepared for your golden years. Absolutely. An experienced certified financial planner like yourself, right, Irene? Yes, thank you. Fantastic. So, Irene, other than money, what other factors should parents consider whilst making retirement plans? Now, one area that is commonly overlooked in retirement planning is lasting power of attorney, or commonly known as the LPA. Most parents, especially those in their 30s and 40s, often feel that getting an LPA done is something only for the elderly. This is not true. Take divorced or single parents with young kids as an example. These young parents, often only in their 30s, will put themselves at an advantage if they get the LPA form 2 done early. Now, in the untoward situation where the single parent is hit with a loss of mental and physical incapacity, resulting from a car accident, for example, she would not have to fret about her kid's financial security. With the LPA Form 2, she would have specified her choice of custodians for her monies. So it's good to get the lasting power of attorney sorted out as soon as possible. Right, Irene? That's right. Okay, now this point links us to another essential area of planning. When it comes to parents' estate planning, can you provide our audience with some estate planning pointers? Yes, yeah, sure. Now, you know, a valid will is the basic building block in your estate planning. Do ensure that you have a valid will drawn up. Many couples with young and elderly dependents may be better served by having a corporate executor who can help them save time and money in the estate distribution process. If you remarry, the will you had written before remarriage will no longer be valid. Your estate is deemed intestate if no new will is written during your second marriage. Estate distribution will be made according to Singapore's Intestate Succession Act. Under the law, each of, say, two children is entitled to only 25% of the estate after 50% is distributed to the new spouse instead of any higher distribution percentage you may have initially intended. Now, if you have children below 21 years old, making a will is even more critical as your choice of guardian for your children can be made through your will. It is critical for you to designate a reliable and competent party, preferably a corporate trustee, to stay and keep the funds intended for your children. Furthermore, to protect your children from having too much money when they're still relatively immature in handling finances, stagger the distribution of inheritances to your children instead of giving a whole amount to them all at once. All right. Thanks for sharing, Irene. Now, before we sign off, is there anything else you would like to share with our audience? You know, Roshan, parents in Singapore often lead such busy lives. Mm. You can lighten your load by engaging a reliable certified financial planner as you plan for your golden years and legacy. I couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you so much, Irene. Once again, for those watching, please do engage an experienced certified financial planner to help you with your financial plan. You can reach out to Irene to find out more. Connect with her on https colon slash slash bit dot L-Y slash I-R-E-N-E-K-Y-E-E -E -E, or you can visit our Philip Wealth Advisory Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash Philip Wealth Advisory if you have further inquiries. Stay tuned for our next episode, which will be released soon. And if you're looking for the latest financial news, weekday mornings, I present the Daily Morning Note on Philip Capital's YouTube channel and Facebook page at 8.30 a.m. Once again, I'm Rashan Gidwani. Thanks so much and see you all again soon. Thanks, Irene. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, please forward it to others, share it on social media, and leave a review. Follow this channel for other podcasts.